Hey guys, and welcome to this fourth video in this series. And first of all, I'd like to apologize for last video. I know the sound was a bit too low. Hopefully it'll be better now. I've modified the settings of my sound card a bit. And apart from that, I just wanted to say that we're approaching the end of the series. This is probably going to be the last video. It's probably going to be divided into two parts. And as you can read it in the title, this is going to be all about GUI graphical user interface design. And the program we're going to use is called JForm Designer. You're going to have to go buy it um, if you want to use it, or I'm pretty sure you can get it for free somewhere. I can't mention how or where though here. Please don't contact me about it either. Um, I'm pretty sure that by searching you can find it somewhere. And so yeah, we run JForm Designer. I've got version 4.0.2. And basically, we go to File, New Form, and we're going to create a JFrame form. And basically, a JFrame is a window like this one, and a JPanel is a component where you place um, buttons and text and that sort of stuff. So we want to create a JFrame. You can put JPanels, JPanels inside JFrames to put components inside a JFrame. So uh, you shouldn't worry about not being able to put components in. And the layout we're going to be using is group layout. It's pretty nice layout. And basically, the layout manager basically helps you manage <laughs> the components in your frame. And what this means is it positions your labels and your buttons in a line so they look nicer and that stuff. So just housekeeping stuff that makes it look nice. And that's it. We press OK. And here we have our window. Let's oops, make this a bit bigger. There we go. And here we've got our window. And notice the aspect of this window is a bit strange. But don't worry. Um, it will vary depending on the operating system of the user. So if your user is, your user is using Mac OS X, this will change to a Cocoa style window and if it's using Windows then it will change to the typical uh, Windows uh, window. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So to create our GUI the first thing we have to do is um, start adding components to it. And what a component is is just um, some text or a button or a text field where we can write something um, and that sort of things. Um, for our iMinor script which is what we're doing in this series, or in these all series. We're just going to need labels and uh, combo boxes. And that's everything we're going to need. Actually, we're going to need a combo box and two labels and a button. That's everything we're going to need. So we click on the J label and we are going to add it here, for example. And then if we go to properties, which we can see here, we can change the name of the label and this is basically what we're going to be calling the label from the code. We don't want to modify the name of labels just because we're not going to change the text that labels display during our program. Um, we do want to change however the text of the label. So here it's going to be I minor. That's going to be the text by indigestion. Yeah, it looks okay. And here we can change the font. So there we go. For example, we can change it to 18. Uh, Trebuchet, yeah. That's okay. We can maybe even make it a bit bigger. 24. Yeah, even better. And then we want to add another J label here, for example. And this is going to say or to mine and then we add J combo box and this J combo box is going to have a name this is going to be or selected and basically we're going to check in the on start for what value not in the on start sorry in the in the event uh, I'll tell you what that means later on what or has been selected here so we're going to expand this a bit Maybe to that length. Maybe that's a bit overkill. And just about that. And we're going to reduce the size of the window a bit as well. That seems reasonable to me. And here we're going to go to uh, model. And this is going to be the rows of the combo box. 
Each line in the above text field represent a value in the model. So here we're going to have tin, copper, iron, clay, silver. I think that's all the ores there are in the mine we're using, which is the East Barrack Mine, I believe. Maybe it's the West. I always get confused with those two. And now this is looking pretty nice. The final thing we want to add is a button. I like to add it here at the bottom right. This is going to be Start button. And the text is going to be Start. And that's our GUI. The final thing we have to do is um, add an event to the button. And what this is, is we tell the program that when we click the button, some code is going to execute and that we're going to supply that code. So we right click the Start button and we add an event handler and it's going to be an action performed event. We can um, leave it as is. And then if we go to the code window, which I don't know where it is. I'm just sorry when I look for it. It's been quite a long time since I used um, JForm Designer. Should be somewhere though. Oh well, never mind. Just go to generate Java code. Uh, we can save it first, that is. So we go to save. Uh, UI, that's, that's that. Generate Java code. Now we go to my documents. Here we can see the Java code. And we can open it. I'm going to open it with this. And now I know you can't see all of it, but this is the code we're going to be using. We've got the imports first, so we copy those into our imports at the script. We can delete the these imports because we're importing everything inside AWT, and these are AWT imports, so we can delete those. And then we go to this again and we can copy everything except the public. We don't have to copy the public. Actually, we mm, should not copy the public. It, it won't work if we do. Um, so we copy from here up until the very end. And we're going to paste it outside our script. So. Right there is a good idea. Okay, and th this is our GUI. Pretty simple stuff. Okay. So, I had to leave for a moment. Sorry about that. So, we've got here our method start button action performed and here is where we're going to add all our code and this code is going to check for what um let me explain this to you this is going to check for what is selected in the combo box and it's going to assign that value to a variable uh, inside our script and that's pretty much it for the moment. Um, I'm not going to have time to explain um, how to set up your script inside our spot in this video. So I'm going to leave that to the next video. Maybe this video will be divided into three parts so I can explain everything correctly. So yeah, I hope you tune in to the next video. It's going to go on through creating that method to check for all of the value selected in the combo box and how to implement this into your script and the final video will test out the GUI and maybe explain some things more. So I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video.